you very much. And first of all, can you all see me? Yes? Can you all hear me? Yes? Good. So cloud computing, why it matters. A uh, quick introduction first. My name is Simon Wardley. I work on cloud computing strategy at Canonical. And Canonical, for those of you who don't know, is the company that sponsors and supports Ubuntu. Now, before I start, quick word of warning. I'm a scientist by training, which means I like graphs. Now, I plotted a quick graph. This is a graph of the level of audience pain, that's you, against the number of slides given in a 20-minute presentation. Now, I reckon there's a safe limit of around about 10 slides. Now, seeing that I'm a scientist, I like to experiment. I'm going to be doing this with no less than 196 slides. <laughs> I know what you're thinking, but don't worry if you do get a bit lost. This is a talk on cloud computing. Being lost is normal. So what is cloud computing? Well, on the way here, I asked a taxi driver in London, and he said, it's like computers on the internet in it. But that's actually very, very good. So I asked a technology strategist, and he said, it's the future of technology and a disruptive shift of the computing stack to online services. Well, that's just a posh way of saying, it's like computers on the internet in it. So I asked a businessman, and he said it's what the technology strategist said it was, but it's also about the provision of computing resources like electricity and getting rid of expensive costs like sysadmins. So I asked a sysadmin, and he said it's like software as a service or SaaS and infrastructure provision and platform as a service, that's PaaS, and utility computing being provided on public clouds, which is different from private clouds, which aren't cloud computing, unless of course you're talking about hybrid clouds, which they are, and it's hyper locking. And did I mention infrastructure? So I looked on Google and I found 67 definitions of cloud computing. Now, whilst this doesn't help you if what you're trying to do is understand a field, it does help me because I'm trying to pad out a presentation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at those 67 definitions. Number one, <laughs> on-demand self-service internet infrastructure where you pay as you go, use what you need, managed by a browser, application, and API. Uh, the cloud computing market is broken up into segments, <laughs> including cloud application, cloud platform, cloud infrastructure, brackets, C cloud pyramid. So what's a cloud pyramid? Well, it turns out it's another eight definitions and an entire argument over whether the cloud is a triangle, and if so, which way does it point? Lost yet? You will be. Definition number two. Now, I'm not really going to go through 67 definitions with you now, so don't worry. But, having done so, I can tell you that there is no definition for cloud computing. Unless, of course, you're talking to a technology strategist, in which case they'll normally define cloud computing as being their product. So I looked around for an analogy. You know, why are we having such a problem with definition? And I found an analogy, and that analogy is this. What is industrial revolution? Well, I asked my taxi driver, and he said, it's like mechanized horses in it. Again, very good. I looked on Google. And I found 43 definitions again. So let's have a look at them. Number one, broad socioeconomic changes starting in the 18th century. Not bad. Number two, rapid development of industry in the early 19th century. Okay, we can't even agree on which century the Industrial Revolution was in. Once you've gone through the definitions, you find that there's no absolute definition. And this is 200 years later. Now, at this rate, by the time we understand what cloud computing is, kittens will be online. <laughs> now, the reason why there is such a problem with definition is cloud computing is simply not a thing. It's a transition. And this is at the heart of the problem, so I want to go and have a look at the fundamentals of this, using the example of the Industrial Revolution. So the Industrial Revolution was a time when we went from bespoke cottage industry to one of mass production. And that, that required a number of different factors. For example, you needed the concept of mass production. You needed suitability of activities for mass production. 
You needed the technology to achieve this. And most of all, you needed a change of attitude in society to accept these new models. Now this is what caused the Industrial Revolution. And you can't define Industrial Revolution in terms of a product or in terms of a technology. Now the same is true with cloud computing. Because it's not just a technology, it's actually a transition and transformation of our industry. And it's caused by multiple different factors. So this is where I'm going to start. I'm going to start with the concept, first of all. Well, the concept behind cloud computing is actually very old. It started back in 1968 with John McCarthy, who predicted that in the future, computing resources would be provided just like electricity. And this term was called utility computing. Now, it's a great idea, but where did it come from? Well, to understand that, you have to go back further and look at the electricity industry. So the electricity industry started off uh, back in 1821 with the innovation of electricity or production. And it was brand new, it was hot, it was what we would call an innovation. And then over the years, the number of bespoke systems were created, such as the Hippolyte Pixie. And then we started to have products being produced until we got to about the 1890s when Edison and Westinghouse created the first utility grids. Electricity had become much more of a commodity. It had become suitable for service provision. Then we had Harvey Hubble created the plug. And then by the 1930s, we had things like the national grid. So electricity provision had transformed from an innovation to something which was a common service. It had become ubiquitous. It had lost its spark. 